when someone has symptoms among our study participants, 72 to 75 percent of their of our study participants first went to a private clinic to a private provider. When I say private provider, it means it could be private clinic, informal care, um, uh, pharmacy, anything. They went there. Their first preference was that. There was a delay of nine weeks from symptom onset to treatment initiation. They made average 12 visits. That's the average. But then it can go. Many patients had actually more than 20 visits before they were diagnosed with TB. So they were roaming around and spending money. Given all this, when I calculate our total cost using the time cost approach, which I say, time loss as an indirect cost, we found that the total treatment cost range from 30,000 to 32,000. Okay, that's the time cost approach. But the point is that 58 to 59% of the cost was actually direct cost. That is the money spent. That is the most important point. It's not the time spent, it's the money spent. Next, when we look at the output approach, that is the income loss, then it ranged from 30,000 to 61,000. And you can imagine that this is, this is clearly said that this clearly said that there is huge unemployment and income loss because of TB, because that's the way we calculated this income loss, a, a, that total cost of TB treatment, right? So, and another very important finding is that 58 to 59% of this cost is incurred during the pre-treatment phase. 30 to 61% of our study participants faced catastrophic cost. So we are far, far away from reaching zero catastrophic cost target. And again, half of them face the catastrophic cost even before studying the treatment. Hello, welcome friends to another episode of NTB Dialogues of 90 for 90 Global Voices series. Today, uh, we have amongst us Dr. Susmita Chatterjee. Uh, as many of you may be knowing, she is a program lead for health economics, health systems science at uh, the prestigious, the George Institute for Global Health India. Uh, she is also a conjoint senior lecturer, at University of New South Wales, DBT Wellcome Trust, India Alliance, clinical and public health intermediate fellow and professor of Prasanna School of Public Health uh, at the Manipal University and has been a former a faculty at the Public Health Foundation of India. So welcome, Dr. Susmita Chatterjee. Thanks a lot for taking out time today for us. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me actually to talk uh, in this forum. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Susmita. Uh, it really means a lot because the kind of work which you have been doing uh, has uh, uh, is really important because it informs the program and probably to improve the response and so that we can really uh, you know, reach those who are unreached and also make it easier for people to tie through the, uh, you know, TB treatment. So uh, before I, uh, you know, we, we begin in the, in the conversation, I think, uh, you know, we, I must say uh, uh, that the study was so important because the catastrophic cost, I think it was about 10 years ago in May uh, 2014, all the governments uh, in Geneva at the World Health Assembly promised to eliminate catastrophic costs. Zero catastrophic costs was the promise. Um, uh, despite TB treatment and uh, diagnostics and a uh, lot of other support, which is provided free of cost by government of India and also many other governments of TB high burden countries worldwide. Uh, um, uh, there is a lot of substantial catastrophic cost. And uh, so this is study and of course diagnostic details. It is so important to find or people early and accurately with tuberculosis, put them on treatment so, they, so that they become uh, untransmittable and stop the spread of infection. It is so critical to reduce human suffering and also to uh, you know, break the chain of transmission. So, uh, so thanks a lot for doing this study. This was so important. So I will, we will provide the link to the study, uh, this, uh, this publication um, in the description below. And uh, uh, I, we don't need, I don't need to talk, talk about this study myself because we have Dr. Susmita amongst us uh, here. So Dr. Susmita, please tell us more about this. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much again. Um, so yes, as you rightly said, that the government of India actually provides free diagnosis and treatment uh, to TB patients. So now the question is, um, why? what was the need of this study? So as, as you rightly mentioned that the NTB strategy actually envisioned that 
there is a milestone of achieving zero catastrophic cost by 2020. And as a signatory of this NTV strategy, we also agreed that we should have like the milestone of achieving zero catastrophic cost by 2020. And the target of achieving zero catastrophic cost for TV affected households by 2025. So that's the target. Now, given that uh, background, we really wanted to know if we want to achieve this target, we really need to know currently what proportion of TB patients in India are facing catastrophic cost, right? So that's the most important information to reach the zero target. Now, there are, of course, few small scale studies, but we wanted to do in a much larger scale so that we can really say that this is what is the situation. And we also wanted to look at other economic components of the study, like other economic consequences of TB patients, okay? It's not only the catastrophic cost, but there could be other things. And what are the drivers of catastrophic cost actually? So given that, we started this study in four states. And those states were actually selected based on several criteria. It was not, not our choice. It was based on several criteria. 1,482 TB patients from these four states, Assam, West Bengal, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu were interviewed. Uh, they were drug susceptible, but we had also 149 drug resistant TB patients who were interviewed throughout their treatment period and beyond. We, we went back about seven to eight months of their post-treatment. And then we actually asked them all about their you know, economic condition during symptom onset to treatment initiation during treatment period and beyond. So there were actually three phases. What we call is pre-treatment, which is like the start before starting the treatment, what happened? During the treatment, what happened? And then after that, what happened? So that's the whole story about the economic hardship of these patients. So uh, as I said, our patients were from four states. They were from 16 districts. 118 TB units. So just for your information that one TB unit covers approximately 200,000 population. So you can imagine 118 TB units is very spread out, like patients are from anywhere. And then uh, also 182 tea gardens. Now I want to tell you one point, our study participants, these 1,482, they were from different groups and they were representative of that group. So at the end of the day, if I say that this is the cost of treatment for TB patients in general population, wherever you go in India, you will get that average cost. So our patients, our sample size was estimated in such a way so that they represent those groups. Now, why did we take these three different types of people? Why did we need these groups? Because Patients in general population is fine, but you know, in national strategic plan for TB, there are few high risk groups. For example, people living in urban slum areas, people living in tea garden areas, because of their very poor living condition, it could be overcrowded, it could be like in tea garden, this is not overcrowded, but this is like, you know, there is no ventilation in their rooms. There could be three, four rooms, but there is no ventilation. So because of this kind of an urban slums are so congested, it's such a bad uh, hygiene, drinking water facilities and everything. So these people are at very high risk of having TB. So that's why we took these two high risk groups and one from the general population just to see whether there is any difference in terms of their treatment seeking behavior, cost, catastrophic cost, outcome. Uh, if there is any difference and government needs to do something differently, for these groups. So that was the objective of taking people from different population. Now, if I, if I tell you very briefly about our cost methodology, we followed the WHO methodology. WHO has a guideline for estimating the cost and catastrophic cost for TB patients. We, we exactly followed that. Only thing was that we followed a cohort, but they generally say uh, cross-sectional, but we thought we'll do a cohort study. Uh, we estimated, so the total TB treatment cost was defined as direct and indirect cost. So direct cost, when I say direct cost, it means that's actual money spent. So anything from my symptom onset till the initiation of treatment and during treatment, whatever the money spent is the direct cost. 
and then indirect cost is two type two there could be two ways of estimating one is like time cost because of tb treatment there will be time loss for the tb patient and their uh, guardians so we, we value that so that way one is indirect cost. one way of doing it which is human capital approach and then another approach is household income loss so like if a tb patient is a main earner of the family and if he loses his employment because of tb there is a huge income loss right so we estimate that income loss how we estimate pre tb household income and during tb household income we come we estimate this way and this is called output approach so in this two approach tb so who guideline says that we should do both but focus on output approach we did both and uh, so that is how total treatment cost was calculated and then catastrophic cost was calculated the formula is that total cost total tb treatment cost if it is more than and equal to 20% of pre tb annual household income then it said it is catastrophic so that so that was the methods of doing it what we found we found is that by the characteristics were very similar what we find in worldwide like tb patient they, those are mostly male and young and productive age group so those were affected in, by tb so that is very similar but what we then found was that when someone has symptom among our study participants 72 to 75% of their of our study participants first went to a private clinic to a private provider when i say private provider it means it could be private clinic informal care um, uh, pharmacy anything they went there their first preference was that there was a delay of 9 weeks from symptom onset to treatment initiation acceptable delay is generally 4 weeks but we are at 9 weeks at the at this point because of this delay there were they spent money you know what they did during this period they did not ignore their symptom much at least our participants they ignored for 2 weeks but the next 7 weeks they actually roamed around they made average 12 visits that's the average but then it can go many patients had actually more than 20 visits before they were diagnosed with tb so they were roaming around and spending money given all this when i calculate our total cost using the time cost approach which i say time loss as the indirect cost we found that the total treatment cost range from 30000 to 32000 okay that's the time cost approach but the point is that 58 to 59% of the cost was actually direct cost that is the money spent that is the most important point it's not the time spent it's the money spent next when we look at the output approach that is the income loss then it ranged from 30000 to 61000 and you can imagine that this is this is clearly said that this clearly said that there is huge unemployment and income loss because of tb because that's the way we calculated this income loss a, a, that total cost of tb treatment right so and another very important finding is that 58 to 59% of this cost is incurred during the pre treatment phase 30 to 61% of our study participants face catastrophic cost so we are far far away from reaching zero catastrophic cost target and again half of them face the catastrophic cost even before starting the treatment yeah yeah thanks a lot for you know sharing these uh, highlights and also taking us through the study and you know it's so important it is so shocking also you know nine weeks diagnostic delay imagine and you know the, the number of visits average visits which you uh, which you found like 12 uh, visits at least like this is really amazing so um, so you also mentioned mentioned that uh, there were drug resistant tb cases also 149 i guess or something so but nine right and so so were there any differences between catastrophic cause diagnostic delays between um, um, did you look at that please can you uh, yeah. of course of course we looked at that um all, uh, so the diagnostic delay if i say it is 14 weeks for the drug resistant tb because because we can we can imagine that because they require lot more tests to figure out that they have drug resistant tb right so that's why the delay is now 14 weeks and when i looked at the 
catastrophic cost faced by them, 32%, like one, out of 149, 32% faced catastrophic cost before studying the treatment. So that was the situation. So it's it's really shocking and yeah. So true. And also this, you know, uh, one of the things which really uh, resonated with, the, the, uh, with what we have been talking to uh, people with BB, people who have, uh, you know, successfully or completed the treatment or uh, are going through the treatment in India and many other countries. Uh, one of the things which resonated, uh, the findings which resonated with us was, uh, you know, like uh, uh, that the most of the cost was incurred before the correct and accurate diagnostics. Dr. Susmita, I still remember a very powerful interview of a person. Um, she is still undergoing treatment for bone DB and uh, lung DB and spinal DB, like all three combined um, in Bangalore right now. Uh, so she said that she suffered and it's already two years for therapy. And she said that she, it, uh, she suffered more before accurate diagnosis was made yes. than what she has suffered in the last two years. And she probably let's hope and let's pray that she uh, completes uh, the cure and uh, recovers uh, fully. Uh, all our prayers and best of wishes for her. But her statement uh, is, you know, it, I just can't forget that, you know, like not only her, but like so many people have said that uh, they, they suffered so much more before, till the point they really got diagnosed, diagnosed and put on treatment. So like, it's like a lot of suffering, human suffering happens um, in, in the journey to get accurate and diagnosed. So your reflections, like how it is so important from, public health point of view from uh, you know from uh, from a, even from a person point of view so if, if i am suffering from tb it is important for me to get treat, uh, get, get on the right diagnosis and right treatment so that <clears throat> to reduce human suffering so just your reflections uh... sure we have also seen that like uh, many many of our 1482 tb patients many and the drug resistant particularly they had so much suffering before they were diagnosed with TB. They, so, so my, uh, what we understood during this period, one point is clear that the community needs to be empowered. Empowered where, like, you know, we asked few knowledge questions, TB related knowledge questions, at the end of, after the treatment completion interview, that is we went back after seven, eight months of treatment completion. And then we asked few knowledge related questions of TB. And it was a shock to see that even after completing, successfully completing TB treatment, over half of the patient did not know how, did, how can one get TB? How can one prevent TB? Where, and then, that actually was shocking for us because if you ask me about any disease, I may not know. But when I went through the disease, I'm cured with the disease. Still, I don't know how did I get this? What is this disease? What are the symptoms? So that actually, I, I we started thinking about this community empowerment, about the knowledge. You know, that is also um, acknowledged by WHO and then a national prevalence survey. They also showed that... Uh, the TB knowledge is very poor among the community. So that is, I felt that we have done several other things, right? We did act active case finding. We did private sector engagement. But we never really looked at the other side of the story. That is the community. We never empowered. I mean, we never said, like, I was thinking of, like, World Health Day, um, my health, my rights. So, you know, they, I, I envision that we should empower them in such a way that they know that this is condition, that they know the symptoms, they identify their symptoms, and then they go to the right place. Actually, what happened is, I also felt, this was not done in our study, but we also felt that there was not much faith on the government health facilities. And so they first went to the private, as we can clearly see that 72 to 75% of our patients first went to our private. Now, many of our patients said, that they did not know that there is, in, even in a government hospital, there is a separate TB unit where they can go and get tested quickly. You know, if they directly go there uh, with a, I'm only assuming, say, for example, just lung TB, okay, because that's sputum and x-ray. So if they go directly there, 
get tested quickly right um, so that is that information is missing uh, i i have seen cases we have seen cases where the tb patient the tb unit is just opposite the road of the house of the patient the patient went to a different state to get treatment and when i said why he said i didn't know so that's that's very shocking these are these are very shocking stories you know so yeah i think that is, that is one point which we should focus on yes, you know so so important all the points which you have just made and of course like community engagement is so important actually uh, keeping people in the center while designing these programs i think that is also very important that shift is happening but it is probably yes. needs to happen much faster much faster yeah totally. yes so, and you know what when you said about uh, um uh, the the uh, you know the, the i i am i am right now in delhi and uh, um so when i speak to people in uh, people undergoing therapy in uh, delhi hospitals like lok nayak and others uh, i am also amazed they come from madhya pradesh and cities from up bihar and i'm like you know there are is the same treatment the same therapy and you have yes. state of the art uh, things there to so it's really important i think about the awareness yesterday i went to um, a site where uh, um, uh, a group is uh, helping support people who are homeless uh, uh, and the the most striking part is that they, the retention rate is very high through the treatment because of the support of uh, the you know volunteers who um uh, you know and uh, the distance between the one of a very prestigious chest clinic and the how person's house was hardly 2 300 meters so imagine the person is undiagnosed uh, yeah. unreached just behind in behind. A, the yeah. the chest clinic almost so you are very right like you know in the in terms of health literacy and we have seen uh, there are other examples from hiv for example the how health literacy and treatment literacy has yes. made a huge difference in terms of taking ownership as you rightly said my health my right of yes. one health day message i think that has really been very phenomenal to shape uh, people's responses and health seeking behavior as well so uh, dr susmita uh, i know you must be under hard press for time so um, we would like to uh, have your insights on uh, how can we do better how can we do better in finding all tb in finding all tb in key populations a lot of tb probably is under uh, is in these key populations as per the data in different studies and uh, probably the initiatives are um, uh, you know we need to find early and accurately find all tb to stop the spread of infection and this is so uh, so we are talking about two things here one is like uh, um oh, you know one, one one we of course have to stop missing cases stop missing cases in the community but also when we are screening them we need to screen them with tools which are really more sensitive and highly accurate so uh, we uh, so i'm clearly talking about who recommended call for um uh, replacing microscopy with molecular tests and this is so important to ensure that people who take a tb test they are not missed they are really uh, they have the best of chance to get diagnosed accurately and put on treatment as early as possible i think this is such an important one the second uh, insight is you work with key populations or you you know such an important study or how can we reach them early because it is so important to reach the unreached over to you. um reaching the unreached uh, um, there are two things you know there is one uh, as there is a proportion who are asymptomatic which is which is who are really difficult to reach and there are a lot of there are there, there needs to be some advanced technology and stuff to reach them but my concern is something else the proportion who are symptomatic but why there is delay there my point is in that because you know we we worked with those who already had symptoms but then there was a delay i from my study perspective if you ask me i would suggest i would think that we also need to make sure that they are diagnosed quickly uh, those because during this nine weeks period they are actually infecting others right so i'm i'm not thinking of the asymptomatic that's a more complex situation but let's think of the symptomatic patients but why there is so much of delay and you know our study showed the delay 
is not only from the private sector, it's also from the public sector. We also looked at the missed opportunities, like how many times they went to the government, how many times they went to the private, and then missed. The, the provider actually missed diagnose them. So I hear, given this population who are already symptomatic and going to get diagnosed, and still there is a, so much of delay, I think that um, the more training of the provider, more engagement, private sector engagement is there, but it's more like a more intense private sector engagement, more training to the provider to identify quickly. And uh, yeah, so that's one thing which I'm sure that we need to really do. And another thing I think is the contact tracing, you know, uh, like those who already had TB, so in, in fact, in the tea garden area, which I found is kind of missing, there was not much, uh, there is, I have seen that contact tracing is going on, but I think we should focus more on that, those, you know, so that at least who are symptomatic, we can, we can get them. And, and if we focus on contract tracing, that means that we, we are getting our population, right, who, who are at risk of having tea. So these are my thoughts, given the you know the study and what we have seen in the uh, field. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much because this is so important. You are very right. Uh, first of all, we cannot afford. This is so unacceptable. We cannot afford to miss those who have symptoms. They need to, of course, be put on treatment and care. They need the early diagnosis, and and we need to look at those reasons which your study uh, shines a spotlight on. On, on on how you know on what how we can do better in ensuring that those who have symptoms they are at least for a, a diagnosed accurately and put on treatment and care and of course the barriers that like catastrophic cause etc are need to be eliminated as quickly as possible and definitely we need to do more about the asymptomatic you're very right you know yes. we have there are a lot of pilots happening with ultra portable extra yeah. machines WHO yes. recommended and um, um they are really showing a lot of results and uh but we they need to go to to scale you know like this is yeah. also very important and contact tracing point is also so so more important these are such a missed opportunities let's yeah. hope the change happens any any final remarks um and of course your message for the upcoming world health day uh so one one point which i think we did not talk about here in detail is the is the unemployment and income loss which i re we really found is an issue now we have seen that the baseline unemployment rate before TB unemployment rate and during TB it, it went up huge, like unemployment rate was huge. Like it went up, you can say from 10% to 67% of unemployment in the during treatment period. So 55% actually were unemployed during TB treatment. Okay. So now what to do with them? Like, uh, like if they lost their income in such a way for months, say for six months, that means a huge loss. And, and you know, to cope up with this situation, they borrowed, they sold their assets, they, they have done several things, took out their children from tuitions, from schools. They did so many other things to manage the situation. Now, one thing I would definitely uh, we, we recommend that there should be a restructuring or protection of these patients from their unemployment, like protection of their livelihood is so much required for this because many of these patients are unfortunately in the informal sector, right? Most of, uh, you know, our, our labor force is most of the, in the informal sector around patients are also like daily wage earners or, or something like that. So how can we protect them? So it's, it's again, uh, right and uh, my health and my right because because i'm i i'm i am suffering from a disease but now what about my livelihood who is going to support this livelihood because i'm i'm not getting anything so so i was when I, we were disseminating our results the tea garden uh, doctors managers they they were saying that there could be an opportunity like you know pregnant women get 6 months of paid sick leave in the tea gardens so like why don't a tb patient get that sick leave paid sick leave you know so these are and then our patients said that those who are say vegetable vendor or the tea garden workers who pluck tea leaves they cannot pluck their leaves uh, and and they 
they pluck their leaves, but they cannot carry this 20, 25 kg on their back every day when they have TB. So restructuring of the employment status, you know, not giving them that work, but there are a lot more work in the tea gardens. Why don't they give some other work, alternate job opportunity to these people so that their income is not lost, their livelihood is maintained, you know? So this is another point which we really, really want to highlight and want to also ensure that if, if the pre-treatment phases cost can be covered by some way, I am sure that because outpatient costs are not covered by any insurance program, right? But I am assuming that that is, that is huge for many, many diseases, including TB. So why not we think about this? So these are my final thoughts about our work, and we really want to make some changes here, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you so much. This is all, this is so important, and uh, uh, particularly the, the the final remarks which we have just made. You know, so so important, and this also resonates probably with other diseases as well. A lot of the recommendations which you have made are so true. You know, we need to look at um um uh, uh, health system as a whole, and uh, and make sure that these obstacles and barriers which block access to existing care um services. Uh, and make it so difficult for people, even uh, despite the treatment being free, for for yes. other conditions as well. But of yes. course, right now we're looking at tuberculosis. But I think a lot of insights and um, from your study uh, and uh, which can probably influence uh, other response uh, health responses as well. So thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Susmita. Really insightful listening to you this morning, and uh, uh, the real pleasure also talking to you. So, Thank you so uh, much. Thanks a lot. And we really look forward to um, the, your study making an impact not only in India, but also in other high burden countries. It is absolutely unacceptable in 2024 to have catastrophic cause, which was recognized 10 years ago by our governments to eliminate it, uh, still being a barrier. You know, this, this more action is definitely needed here. And of course, the other, all other findings of the study, including diagnostic delays, no, no, no excuse for any kind of diagnostic delays if we are to end TB. The, the, the stopping the spread of infection is so important, uh, equally important as uh, reducing human suffering because of TB. No, no one needs to suffer from TB and of course, or, or get TB because TB prevention is so possible. Thank you, Dr. Susmita. Thank you again.